attempting to service or install the CL60 grid tie PV inverters from Schneider Electric. Wear personal protective equipment rated adequately for all potential hazards on site, following local, regional, and industry safety regulations. Ensure your upstream AC and DC breakers and disconnects are turned off and locked out and tagged out using LOTO procedure. Turn the DC connect to the off position and on the CL60A, perform LOTO. On the CL60A only, turn the AC disconnect to the off position and perform LOTO. Disconnect the PV string cables incoming to the inverters by disengaging all your MC4 or H4 connectors using the provided PV connector removal tool or manufacturer's recommended tool. Once all power sources are disconnected from the CL60, wait 10 minutes before removing covers. Measure for the absence of voltage using the appropriate PPE equipment and minimally rated 1000 volts DC, 400 volts AC meter. In this video, we will explain how to connect the CL60A and CL60E. The following tools will be required to perform CL60 commissioning. PPE, a Phillips No. 2 screwdriver, 2mm flathead screwdriver, RJ45 crimper, MC4 or H4 crimper, diagonal cutter, a T30 driver, and a torque driver. Step 1. Completely loosen the six T30 screws to remove the lower cover of the CL60, and once removed, place the cover aside in a safe location. Step 2. Add a chassis ground. To add secondary protective earth or grounding, remove the M6 screw, spring washer, and flat washer on the right-hand side of the unit, and then insert a 16mm or 5AWG cable furnished with an uninsulated single-hole compression lug together with the hardware and torque appropriately. Step 3. Installing AC conductors. In the CL60E, the AC cable is a five-conductor cable with three lines, one neutral and one ground. Ferrules should be used for stranded wire. With the CL60 comes two AC glands. One is pre-installed for 30.5 to 40 millimeter diameter cables, and a second size is included with the accessories for smaller 25 to 30.5 millimeter cables. A single ceiling ring to clinch the gland is included as well. It is to be used with both AC glands. To install the cable through a gland, make a small incision. Insert the ring and push the cable through incision in the AC gland. Tighten the ring over the gland to 12.5 Newton meter or 9.2 pound foot. Lock the gland in place with the locking nut torqued to 12.5 Newton meter or 9.2 pound foot. Install the AC conductors on the CL60E, starting with the ground wire. Ensure to correctly torque the terminals to 4.3 Newton meter or 3.2 pound foot. Ensure each phase is installed in the correct order. Installation methodology of the AC conductors in the CL60A is similar to the CL60E with a few notable differences in configuration. With hot three phases, no neutral, and the ground going directly to the mounting plate for the AC terminal block. As an alternative to using cable glands, conduit can be used with the CL60. There are different options in conduit types, and selection depends on your jurisdiction's regulations to meet proper installation requirements. Independent of conduit type, a weather-tight seal must be used with conduit to ensure that the IP rating of the unit is maintained. Step 4. Installing communication cabling. Remove the tightening nut on one of the communication cable glands. Then push a plug out with a small flat screwdriver from the top. Keep the plug for reuse of temporary communications connections. Run the shielded communications cable through the tightening ring before pushing the cable through the cable gland. 
And once you have adequate length of cable in the CL60, tighten the nut to 3.75 Newton meter or 2.8 pound foot. Finish the cable by adding RJ45 connector or ferrules to the cable. Step 5. To access the communication connectors, remove two Phillips number 2 screws locking the clear protection panel in place. Retain the screws for reuse and pull the cover open. Step 6. Communications option A. Make your Ethernet connection. For star topology or end of daisy chain connections, connect to port 1. For mid-string CL60s in a daisy chain, connect the second cable to port 2. Step 6. Communications option B. Make your RS485 connection using RJ45 connectors. For end of daisy chain connections, connect the out port. And if more than 14 units are in the RS485 daisy chain, set the terminator to on. For mid-string CL60s in a daisy chain, connect the second cable to the in port and ensure the terminator is set to off. Step 6. Communications option C. Make your RS485 connection using bus terminal block connectors. Connect the three-wire cable lower terminal block, the out terminal block, in the following sequence. Receive positive to A, transmit negative to pin B, and common to zero volt. Torque the terminals to 0.2 Newton meter or 0.15 pound foot. And if more than 14 units are in the RS485 daisy chain, set the terminator to on. For mid-string CL60s in a daisy chain, connect the second cable to the upper terminal block or the in-terminal block and ensure the terminator is set to off. Step 6. Communications option D. Make your temporary PC connection. From the base of the CL60, we have our RJ45 connector, which is communicating over RS485. This then connects to the coupler, which then allows a male-to-male -male connection. From there, connect to a USB to RJ45 converter, and you can plug into the laptop or computer of choice, and you will communicate with the CL60 using the Connext CL Easy Config software provided by Schneider Electric. Step 7. Installing PV connectors. Strip 7 mm of cable jacket. Feed that through tightening nut. Put the pin in the correct type of crimper. Amphenol for H4 and multi-contact for MC4. Once crimped, Install your insulator cap and tighten the connector using the manufacturer recommended tools for the PV connector. Step 8A Adding Y connectors to the CL60A. Each input on the CL60A is capable of handling 30 amps. Therefore, two PV strings in parallel can go to one input on the CL60. With a Y connector upstream to the positive input, add two inline 15 amp fuses for protection of each PV string. The output of the Y is connected to one input on the CL60A.
Similar for the negative Y connection, the same fuses are used in reverse, each protecting one string with a 15 amp fuse. And a single cable feeds from the upstream connection Y leading up to the CL60A input. Step 8B, adding inline fuses to the CL60E. The CL60E includes 15 amp fuses in the positive leg. Install your positive PV string connection directly to the CL60E. Where circuit protection is required on the negative leg, add MC4 15 amp inline fuses to the negative inputs of the CL60E. Your PV string can then connect to the other end or directly to the CL60E when negative fusing is not required. Be sure to watch the next video in the CL60 series on the commissioning of the CL60.